Good to see everybody on this wonderful Monday. A new week, a new day, a new beginning of another week, another chance to do it right. <laughs> amen. 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 We've got a great lesson. Got a great lesson today. Uh, um, but blocks your blessings. But, quote unquote, the word but blocks your blessings. And we're going to be talking about that in many, many, many ways today. And of course, <laughs> Uh, the Holy Spirit again gave me another great diagram. It's really funny how, how the Holy Spirit has been lately. Whenever we cover a certain topic, He's been giving He's been giving me different diagrams to help help us understand the visual of what the lesson's about. So we we got another great diagram the Holy Spirit gave me to explain about our prayers. And sometimes, why is it that you you're doing everything you can? What are some of the things involved in our praying? that we must make sure we include i'm just giving you i'm just giving you a hint right now because i'm going to share with you in a minute the diagram will explain it all <laughs> and today's lesson actually was a blessing because this this lesson a friend of mine over the weekend one of our facebook followers well you know like, like a lot of times you guys will send me different different videos that you find or a blessing to you or different sermons or different testimonies and i i, I love it when you guys share me videos i i get behind catching up on all of them but whenever you see a video that you want to share with me, feel free to send it to me, uh, whether it's email or send it on, on Facebook. But this particular message, I was I was resting yesterday, and so Holy Spirit said, "Listen to this message." There was about it was, uh, a great lesson by Pastor Kenneth, Kenneth Hagen. It was years ago. I don't I forgot when the date of this particular message was. But the title is "Financial Keys." Now he really didn't give a hint as to what he was talking about. But there was something that ministered to me in that sermon, and the Holy Spirit says, "Add it to the fellowship lesson." I was I was already having a lesson about doubt already there, but uh, but there's a principle that I'll explain to you that, that I learned that I, I was revealed in that sermon I heard from him that will add greatly to what we've been talking about. We've done a lot of lessons on faith, unshakable faith, my Bible study, home of the word, unshakable faith, how to walk in faith, how to keep your faith. How to build your faith. We, see, the great thing about coming on every day is we get to break it down in a very minute, minute chunks to get stronger and stronger in our walk with the Lord and talk about little minute things. So what we're doing when we come together every day, we, we get to hone in and work on every little aspect of each thing we talk about so we can really understand how to apply the word to its fullest in our life, in everything that we do. And then, Amen? So the... the the word today, coming from James, our, our text for the day is uh, James one. James one. Now we're going to be starting the book of Numbers. Put your put your finger in book of Numbers, chapter thirteen. But right now the text for the day is James chapter one. So turn to James, and then we'll go back to to Numbers. James one, verse five through eight. But if any of you lacks wisdom let him ask of god who gives to all generously without reproach and it will be given to him but he must ask in faith without any doubting for the one who doubts is like the surf of the sea driven and tossed by the wind for that man ought not to expect that he will receive anything from the lord for being a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Stop right there. The key to what we're talking about, verse 6. The key, verse 6. But he must ask in faith, and not just faith, faith without doubt. See, we can ask by faith, but the work is, where the work comes is asking in faith without doubt. For the one who doubts is like the surf of the sea driven and tossed by the wind so that's a danger of doubt right there that's a danger of doubt verse 7 for that man ought not to expect that he will receive anything from the lord amen amen revelation Rev Rev yes right he yes i got i'm going to binge on some of his lessons he has some great messages and i just whoever i can i gotta go back and thank whoever sent me his, his sermon 
because I, I saw some great I just I just saved all of his stuff go back now notice notice verse 7 if you walk if you if you if you're asking with doubt in your heart verse 7 says that man ought not to expect that he will receive anything from the Lord if you if you're praying with doubt you're counting your prayer if you're praying with doubt in your heart and, I, and I've said this many times I've said this many times if you have doubt in your heart when you're praying as it comes out of your mouth as it comes out of your mouth you are negating your prayer because you're praying without 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 faith and believing that you're gonna believe when you receive it remember when you pray believe you have received it and you, you shall have it believe you have received and you shall have it but if you pray and don't believe you can have it you're actually countering the prayer with your doubt as it's coming out your mouth as you're speaking it you put you putting doubt in your prayer as it comes out of your mouth so when you pray believe you have received it that's what we say all the time when you're praying for something when you're praying for it you've got to see what you're praying for see the devil the devil always works hard the devil works hard to block your sight of what you're praying for if you're praying to be healed see yourself healed but the devil tries to make you say, no, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. If, you, if you're walking in lack, see yourself prosperous. See yourself with provision. See yourself protected. See yourself walking in healing. You got to do this every day because the devil is attacking you every day. You can't just do this once in a, every Sunday. You can't just do this every now and then. You got to see yourself walking in what you're praying for every day. It's got to be a part of your daily, your daily prayer life. And sometimes, sometimes... You might have to do it every day, several times a day. The devil's not going to just attack you in the morning. He's going to attack in the morning. He's going to attack at lunchtime. He's going to attack while you're driving home. He's going to attack you at night. He's going to attack you while you're watching TV. He's going to attack you when he goes. He's going to attack you nonstop. He's going to, he's going to attack you non Hey, Greg. He's going to attack you nonstop. That's what it means by pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing whenever you're living. Pray without ceasing in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God for you. So whenever... You need to pray. Pray. Because the devil's going to be attacking your mind about what you're trying to see for your life 24-7. Because he doesn't want you to see it. Because when you see it, you believe you have received it. You shall have it. He doesn't want you to have what you're praying for. He does not want you to have what you're praying for. So that's that's the first nugget right there. If you remember that what you're praying for, as hard as you're praying, the devil is working equally as hard to make sure you don't get it. And see, when we pray, that's why we pray in the authority. That's why we pray. That's why we pray. That's why we pray using our authority. That's why we pray focused on the word of God. That's why we pray and settled and focused on the things coming out of our mouth. Because we want to make sure when we pray, believe you have received it. When you pray, don't look at the world. When you pray, don't worry about your life. When you pray, you're looking only at what you're praying about. You're looking only at what it is you're seeking. If you're seeking health, you're seeking healing, you're seeking provision, you're seeking protection. What it is, what it is, you got to see it. You got to keep seeing it. Keep seeing it. Keep seeing it. All you're worried about, keep your mind stayed on the Lord. When your mind is stayed on the Lord, there's your answer. There's your answer to prayer. When your mind is stayed on the Lord, fixed, unmovable, on what it is you're praying for, you got to do it every day. Speak it every day. See it every day. Confess it every day. Thank the Lord for it every day. These things, because if you don't, you go, well, but but I don't know. Here goes, here comes but, but I've been praying for so long. What do you mean, but you've been praying for so long? You just, but means what? Something's going to happen. Maybe I'm not, once you say but, but I don't know if I'm going to get it because I've been praying for years. When is going to happen? But but I, want, but I wonder if God hears me. But I, I wonder if I'm praying right. But But I don't know. I don't know when my life is going to change, but see, see what the word but does? But is leading you to a doubt. What does it say? What, what, what verse 6 says? When you, wait, wait, let, me, let, me, let me paraphrase that. Ask in faith without any doubt, any doubt, no doubt, no doubt whatsoever. Without, now I know that's hard, that is hard because the work is, the devil is working as hard as you to put doubt in as we're working to keep doubt out. It's a it's a it's a non-stop spiritual battle. We're praying to keep doubt out, and the devil's working just as hard to put doubt in. 
So that's why we that's why we gotta keep speaking the word. When man shall live by, live by bread alone, every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, whenever doubt comes to your mind, answer it with the word of God. Whenever doubt, if you have to just have one verse, you can have it, have it, have it as your doubt verse. Whenever any doubt comes in your mind, answer it with the word of God. Because that, that's capturing every thought. Remember we talked about it? Capture every thought that's not like God in Corinthians, Corinthians. Capture every thought that's not like God. We got to capture it. We can't let it move into our mind. Start staying in our mind. We're not paying rent. All of a sudden, all of a sudden we're distracted. We're worried. We're walking in fear because we entertain the thought. Can't let it happen. As soon. And you know when it's negative because you feel your mind change. As soon as you feel your spirits change, you know that the doubt is coming in, an attack is coming on. And you gotta, don't wait for it to move into your mind. No, as soon, as soon as you feel that thought, that worry, that fear coming in your mind, capture right there. I rebuke that thought right now. I rebuke that negativity right now. I rebuke the spirit of fear right now. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke fear. I rebuke depression. I rebuke loneliness. I, re I rebuke a broken heart. I rebuke it. And I bind it. And I cast you out of my mind. Cast you out of my house. Out of my family. Back to the pit of hell from which you came. Got to You got to do it. You got to capture it. Capture it immediately. You got to capture it immediately. Or it will move into your mind. And once it moves into your mind, you got to, now you got to fast and pray. Once it moves into your mind, you now have to fast and pray because the word but makes you feel like you're not adequate. You're inadequate. Oh, but I'm but I'm not doing enough. But I'm not praying right. But I'm not getting any answers. Yeah, you're getting answers. God hears everything. God hears every prayer. Some people think, some people think because you don't you, you don't see God move, He didn't answer you. Sometimes God not moving means not now. Sometimes God silence means not now or no. See, people think, well, God didn't hear me. Yes, he did. And his non-response means no. Or his non-response means not now. See, God answers every prayer. We want to hear the answer a certain way. God answers all kinds of ways. Validation through other people, through urging from the Holy Spirit. God answers us all kinds of ways. And then we, first thing we do is, well, I guess I'm not praying right because God didn't answer me. Yes, he did. If you stand still and look and see what you prayed for, and, you, and it could have been something, well, should I do this? I wonder if I should do this. I wonder if I should do this. I don't, I don't know if I should do this. But by the fact that you're saying, I don't know if I should do this, you already answered your own question. No, you shouldn't do it. The fact that you're saying, should I be doing this? That's because the Holy Spirit just said, no. And your flesh is going, should I be doing this? And the reason you're asking the question is because the Holy Spirit just said, don't do that. And you want to do you want to, the flesh wants to do it anyway and by fighting that you start asking yourself i wonder if i should do that i wonder if i should go there i wonder if i need i wonder i wonder i wonder the holy spirit is always telling you something but 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 i wonder if i should do that we got to make sure we listen amen now so that's the text now let's tur turn back to numbers let's turn back to numbers numbers chapter 13. now now i'm going i got i want you to read all of chapter 13 and 14 I'll give you the exact I'll give you the exact verses to read but in, in for the sake of time I'm going to kind of jump through this is where Israel was in the wilderness and they were told to go spy out the land that I'm going to give to you now this is a perfect example <clears throat> this is a perfect example of our tech about our title but can block your blessings in this case but stopped a lot of blessings and i'll tell you what i mean let's look at verse 13 1 versing 13 chapter 1 uh, excuse me numbers chapter 13 we're going to start at verse 1 through 3 then then the lord spoke to moses saying send out for yourself men so they may spy out the land of canaan which i am going to give to the sons of israel you shall send a man from each of their father's tribes, every one a leader among them. So Moses sent for them from the wilderness of Paran at the command of the Lord, all of them who are heads of the sons of Israel. Now, now, let me set this up correctly. Let me set this up correctly. This, what causes this problem, we're about to find out. Because I'm about to jump to when it came back. The Lord says, 
go into the land which I'm going to give you. Now, what they did not recognize or remember, they didn't pay attention. Go spy out the land that I am going to give you. Now, if the Lord says, do something through the Holy Spirit, many times we go, but but can I do that? Isn't that too big for me? I don't know anything about that. What What do you say? But, but Lord, I don't know anything about that. But Lord, I'm going to a new place. But Lord, we start questioning the Lord before we even get to where he's telling us to go. He gives us a direct, he gives us a direction and we go, but, but, uh, but I don't know. I don't know about that. What do you mean you don't know about that? You don't have to worry about that because the Lord just said, I'm going to give it to you. You just be obedient so I can give it to you. That's what's going on here. Go spy out the land. I am going to give you. Now let's jump. Jump to verse 25. Now they're coming back. Now in between is who all went and all this stuff. Now jump to verse 25. When they returned from spying out the land at the end of 40 days, because they were gone 40 days, they proceeded to come to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation of the sons of Israel in the wilderness of Paran and Akadish. And they brought back word to them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. So they brought back all the wealth and fruit of the land. Oh yes, this is the land of milk and honey. God said, I will give you a land of milk and honey. So they brought back the milk and honey. They brought back the proof that the land they're about to be getting is wealthy. Now, that, that didn't stop there. Verse 27. So now they showed them all the land of milk and honey. Thus they told him, we went into the land where you sent us. And it certainly does flow with milk and honey. And this is its fruits. Verse 28. Nevertheless, the people who live in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and very large. And moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak. Anak is living in the land of Negev and the Hittites and the Jebusites. Amorites are living all in the hill country. And the Canaanites are living by the sea. By the side of the Jordan. Now, now, what are they doing? They're, they're now they're thinking about the problem. God just said, "I'm going to give you the land." They brought back the fruits, proving how good the land is. Now they're going in the butt. But, but look, nevertheless, the people are big. The lands, and they start naming all the people who live in the land, and how how powerful they are. Now, Caleb, verse thirty, among among the group, the two men who are positive. Caleb and Joshua. Caleb said, Caleb said, quiet before Moses. We should by all means go up and take possession of it, for we will surely overcome it. But now, Caleb is confident because Caleb's like David. Caleb remembers who just said it. God said, Go into the land, I am going to give you. I am going to give you. I didn't ask you what's in the land. Go into the land. I am going to give you. He didn't say go into the land uh, and try to avoid some things in the land. No, go into the land. I am going to give you, which means I am going to give you victory over whatever you receive or face in that land. But here they come again. Verse 31. But the men who had gone up before said, we are not able to go up against the people. They are too strong. What are they doing? They are too strong. They're forgetting who's got their back. God's got their back. They forgot completely about that. We are, they are too strong for us. Yeah, they're too, they're too strong for us, but not for God. 32. So they gave out to the sons of Israel a bad report of the land, which they had spied out, saying the land through, the, the land through which we have gone in spying out is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people we saw are great men of size. There also we saw with Nephilim, sons of Anak, and a part of the Nephilim. And we became like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so we were in their sight. Now, stop right there. They became grasshoppers because they forgot who's got your back. Who's got your back? God's got your back. You can't, that's what we always say. We cannot do this alone. If you try to do something without God, yes, you are small. The problem is going to overwhelm you because the problem is bigger than you. But with God, 
with God, all things are possible. They completely forgot who just told them, go into the land. I am going to give you. But but they're giants there. And when they're too they're, but but they're too big, they're too strong. And we were like grasshoppers in our own mind. They shrunk in their own mind because they forgot who's going to give you the land. That's disconnection. Maybe I always talk about when you disconnect from the source, you forget you can't do all things through Christ because if you disconnect there is no Christ I can't do all things because if there's no Christ you just disconnected but when you connect I can do all things through Christ who what strength is you you get your strength when you're connected I can do all things connection through Christ who strengthens me that connection gives you the strength to hold on by faith that connection gives you the power whatever you need to walk in victory but they disconnected by looking at the world and speaking the world over the power of God. They completely forgot about the power of God. And instead of keeping their minds stayed on him, they got their minds stayed on the giants. They're bigger than us, they're mighty, they're warriors. Is there anything too hard for God? Now, now, <laughs> let me let you understand the repercussions of that doubt. Now, they just confidently, confidently said, we cannot do it. We cannot go, we cannot go against these people. They're too strong for us. Caleb said, just like David, Caleb said, we can by all means go in and take the land. Because Caleb remembered who just gave you the promise. God, Almighty God, who just parted the Red Sea, water from rock, all the things that he all the ways God showed himself to the people. Either you believe God is who he is, or you don't. And Caleb remembered. And now let's jump. <laughs> Because of that but, God was ready to wipe out all of them who doubted. Now, jump to verse 14, 11. Now, I want you to read all of 13 and 14, but I'm just jumping for the sake of time. Now, their but got God upset because he just said, take the land I am going to give you. You come back to God saying, but I can't do that. By coming back and saying, they're too strong for us. You are you basically slapping God in the face saying, well, I know God, you want to give me to it, but the land, but, but the land, it got giants, but they're too strong, Lord. Why are you, why are you questioning almighty God who is bigger than any challenge you'll ever face? But they did. They challenged. Now, let's look at verse 11, 14, 11. Now, God, God is upset. God is upset about their report. They just completely doubted almighty God who wants to give them a blessing, and they come back, but, but, I can't do, but, but, excuse me, verse 11, God, the Lord said to Moses, how long will this people spurn me? How long will they not believe in me? Despite all the signs, all the signs which I perform, I will smite them with pestilence and dispossess them. I will make you into a nation greater and mightier than they now now and then in the next verses the, the ver verses the lord goes into all the reasons why he's upset now jump to verse 19 moses realizes the wrath of god is about to come on the people so now moses intercedes for the people who did not believe verse 19 pardon i pray the iniquity of the people according to the greatness of your loving kindness just as you just as you also have forgiven this people from Egypt even until now verse 21 but indeed as I live but indeed uh, no, 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 wait, wait, let's stop right there Moses is now praying for the Lord to spare the people who doubted the Lord because the Lord is upset because I just said I'm gonna give you the land and you come back tell me it's too big for you and you saying are you questioning me now Moses is now interceding for the non-believers verse 21 verse 20 verse 20 so the lord said i have pardoned them according to your word now moses interceding spared the biggest wrath verse 21 but indeed as i live all the earth will be filled with the glory of the lord surely all the men who have seen my glory and my signs which i performed in egypt in the wilderness yet have put me to the test 
these ten times have not listened to my voice, shall by no means see the land which I swore to their fathers. They shall see who spurned me. Let me say that. Verse 23. Shall by no means see the land which I swore to their fathers, nor shall any of those who spurned me see it. But, verse 24, my servant Caleb, because he has had a different spirit, has followed me fully. I will bring into the land which he entered, and his descendants shall take possession of it. Verse 27, how long shall I bear with this evil congregation who are grumbling against me? I have heard the complaints of the sons of Israel, which are making against me. Say to them, as I live, says the Lord, just as you have spoken in my hearing, so I will surely do to you. Your corpses will fall in this wilderness, even all your numbered men, according to your complete number, from 20 years old up, who have grumbled against me. Surely you shall not come into the land in which I swore to settle you, except Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and jo Joshua, son of Nun. Now, that's a mouthful. Now, what I'm trying to let you understand, this is why the children of Israel were in the wilderness for so long. The Lord was, I, I think, I think I read, I think I read, they could have crossed the wilderness. I think, I think it was something like, I believe it was 12 days. They could have crossed the wilderness in, in 12 days, but because of their disbelief, their doubt, doubting God in his face, after him telling you, I'm going to give you this land, just go spy it out, spy and look at the land I'm going to give you. They come back telling God, it's too, it's too hard for us. So God said, okay, what I'm going to do, Caleb and Joshua, they believed. So I'm going to, I'm going to spare everyone who is 20 years and younger and everyone who is 20 years or older who doubted me shall not see the promised land. And so that's why they wandered in the wilderness. I think it was 40 years and they could have crossed it in 12 days. They, the Lord basically had them walking in circles until everybody who doubted died and the new generation were the ones who went into the promised land with Caleb and Joshua leading the way. Even Moses didn't go. Remember, Moses didn't see the promised land because he was disobedient when he spoke to the rock, when, when he hit the rock instead of speaking to the rock. So see, when the Lord is giving you, when the Lord is trying to tell you something and we say, but God, how am I going to do that? What are we, what, we never question God. God already knows why he's telling us to do it through the Holy Spirit. Now, in, in today's time, he's speaking to us through the Holy Spirit. But see, we still do, we still do the same thing. This shows disobedience here caused by doubt kept them from getting to the promised land they were all dreaming of all that time. All that time, they want to get to the promised land. Get to the promised land. He sends you to the promised land. And then you come back doubting you're worthy to receive it. And that got them stopped their blessing. That stopped their blessing in a track. Now, <clears throat> I want to share that story first because that is the best example of, of doubting the Lord in his face. See, sometimes the Holy Spirit who speaks to us today, the Holy Spirit will give you a direction. Uh, he will tell you to do something, a move, a, a move in a relationship, a move in a job, even move to another city. The, the Holy Spirit is always looking out for what is our best interest. But sometimes we don't understand the move. Well, but God, I don't know anybody there. But the Holy Spirit didn't ask you that. You're praying for a breakthrough. You're praying to get somewhere. And he's trying to take you where the breakthrough is. But God, but God, it's going to be a hard move. But God, I don't know anybody there. But God, but, but what are you doing? He's trying to take you to where your breakthrough is. And we get into, but, but, but how am I going to do that? I don't have a job there yet. But God said, whatever the Holy Spirit tells you to do, he knows what you need before you even ask for it. If the move, if you're praying for a, 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 a breakthrough, you're praying to be spared. You're praying for provision. You're praying for whatever. And you come in with, but, uh, but I don't know about that. What do you mean you don't know about that? Holy Spirit knows about everything. And he always, who we forget, he always has our best interests in mind. 
He's not going to punish you. He's not moving you to punish you. He is trying to take you to where you try to get. You're praying for breakthrough. You're praying for healing. You're praying for deliverance. You keep saying, but uh, I don't know if I can make that move. He didn't ask you that. You need to move here. You're praying for prevent. You you're praying for breakthrough, right? I'm gonna give you a breakthrough if you get to this point B. I'm trying to take you to where the breakthrough, the breakthrough is waiting for you. But you so bit uh, but uh, but uh, but God, that's oh, I got a pack. Oh, but God, I gotta look for another job. Oh, but God, I got my 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 children. My children don't know anybody in that city. Let your, let your friends, your children gonna make new friends. We get too many butts. And the butt is standing in the way of our blessings because we're too caught up in, but I don't know about that. God knows exactly what we need. He knows where we need to go. He knows what we're praying for. But if we try to get to where he's trying to go and take us and we get caught up with, but my life now, but my life now, but my life here, but I don't know how am I going to do it? How am I going to do it? If God tells you to go somewhere, he's going to give you what you need to be successful at where you're going. He's not gonna tell you to go somewhere and leave you. He's taking you somewhere because that's where your blessing is. That's where he's gonna use you. That's where the breakthrough's gonna happen because he's trying to take you to the level he needs you, not just for the kingdom, but to also be a blessing to you for your obedience. That's why we gotta make sure we keep butt out of our vocabulary. The butt is, the butt can be our enemy now. Now, <laughs> Now, the other examples, as we know, the, these scriptures, you, you don't have to write these down at the end, but, but please do list these scriptures. I'm giving you the examples of all the other times where doubt in the Bible was pronounced as being a reason. The, 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 Jesus kept saying, oh, men, a little faith. Oh, men, a little faith. The first example, when uh, in Mark, Mark 11, 23, Mark 11, 23. And then, of course, when Jesus worked many miracles, when, when, when Jesus worked many miracles, so many times, so many times, the disciples kept saying, how come we couldn't do that? Mark 11, 23. Now, what, what had happened earlier? The fig tree. Now, the, the disciples saw... The, the disciples saw Jesus speak to the fig tree and the fig tree instantly withered. Now, now, Peter, back in verse 21, we're going to start verse 21, 21 to 23, Mark 11, 20 to 23, Mark 11, 20 to 23. As they were passing by in the morning, they saw a fig tree withered from the roots. But being reminded, Peter said, Rabbi, Look at the tree you cursed because earlier, earlier Jesus cursed the tree and instantly it died. Now he said, Look at the he said, Look at the tree which you cursed has withered. And Jesus answered in verse 22. Jesus answered, saying, Have faith in God. Truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says is going to happen it will be granted to him let's say that again let's say it again truly i say to you whoever says to this mountain be taken up and cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart but believes what he says is going to happen it will be granted to him and therefore here comes the verse we always know Therefore, I say to you, all things for which you pray and ask, believe that you have received it and they will be granted to you. That's what leads into the verse we always know. Because he's saying, you must believe what you say. Now, this is where the diagram came in. And this is where, my, this is where the lesson, when I was listening to the, the Pastor Hagen, uh, uh, Hagen. Now, what Pastor Hagen shared in his message was really, it, it, I mean, it, the reason his message spoke to me so much is because you guys already know about the attack that's been going with the, you guys know 
how the attack on the praise mobile has been going past couple years. The air conditioning went out last year, the transmission now, the windows have been, I've had to fix the windows just falling. I mean, the, the praise mobile has been under attack, right? So he starts talking about several years ago in his ministry before he passed, he went back in time at a time where he was ministering from place to place. And he started talking about his car and how, how, how his car was just falling apart as he was ministering and i said i said man is are you talking to me because we sometimes john and myself we said what is going on with the car what i mean what i know because our ministry is in the car so we know exactly what's happening with the car the car is an attack because we're ministering from the car so he goes into talking about how his car was an attack and then how he was praying that the, you know he, he he saw another message himself this is a message that came from another message. And, and now I'm sharing it with you guys because this is what the di diagram came from. Now, let me tell you first, before I show you the diagram, he was basically saying, even when we, even when we have faith, we have faith and faith, you got we have to believe what you pray for is sometimes the world is always trying to put doubt in your heart. See, doubt enters the mind. But if you have faith in your heart, faith in your heart can overcome doubt in your mind if you've got the strong enough faith. But if you keep listening to enough doubt, it will go to your heart and now you've, count, you've counted your faith. See, the devil's always gonna try to introduce doubt into your heart. He's trying his best. And if you've been walking this walk for years, you've been praying for years, you've been praising for years, standing still, seeking God, you're doing everything you can to live for the Lord. And yet, you still feel you still feel like, well, what what is going on now? I want to recall. I'm going to put these scriptures. I'm going to paraphrase, but I'm giving you all these scriptures under the video. Remember in Daniel, the reason Daniel did a 21 day fast, he saw this vision he didn't understand in chapter 10. He didn't understand this vision, so he fasted and prayed for 21 days, trying to understand what this vision was he saw and then the an angel appeared before him and he said i'm paraphrasing he said for 21 days i've been trying to get to you but i had to fight the prince of persia which is a demonic spirit and then the prince of greece and these these princes are principalities and he was telling daniel i heard your prayer as soon as you said it but it's taken me 21 days to get here because i've been in a battle in the spirit to get to you now this is the part we got to understand when we're praying for stuff it's being released it is being released in the spirit there is a battle taking place between the answer to our prayer and us here comes the diagram here's the diagram as i was as i was formulating this i'm going to put this online as always now let me let you see what this is I hope you guys can see this. We are praying every day. We're praying. We are connected. We're praying. We are connected every day. We're praying. Connected. I'm praying. Now, hear the blessings. Hear the blessings. Provision. Healing. Deliverance. All the things we're praying for have been released from the Father. We're connected. We're praying. Whoa. Wait a minute. What's this? The devil is blocking your blessings. Your blessings are being blocked. You're doing nothing wrong. You're connected. You're praying. Hear all your answers. Hear all your answers. All your answers have been released. How come you don't see them? How come you don't see them? They're being blocked by a demonic spirit. In this case, in this case, the devil to be blocking the very thing you're praying for. Now, what happened here? When you realize the devil is blocking your healing, your provision, your blessings, your answered prayers, everything you prayed for has been released, but it's being blocked. When you remember to say, in the name of Jesus, devil, take your hand off my health, take your hand off my finances, take your hand off my job, take your hand off my family. When you say, take your hand off, whoa, here comes the authority. Here comes the authority. The authority, which is about to knock the devil out the way. The authority, once you use your authority in the name of Jesus, here comes Luke 10, 19, Matthew 4, 4, man shall live by bread alone, Ephesians 10, uh, 6, 11, 
the whole armor of God comes in and knocks the devil off the way. What happens when he's knocked out of the way? Here come your blessings. They've already been released. Once you knock the devil out of the way, get thee behind me, Satan. Get out of my way. Get out of my way, Satan. Once you tell him to get out of the way in the name of Jesus, he moves. Your blessings come straight to you. Now, now this, the one thing that this his sermon taught me, we've been talking about it the whole time. We're praying for what we're, we're praying in the name of Jesus. I lift up my health. I lift up my, I lift up my need. My whatever you, whatever you're praying for, we've done that. We were speaking that. This is where the revelation hit me. The revelation hit me like a light bulb, and I'm going to go back and thank the person. The the the, the dot we I have not been connecting and and sharing with you is when we're praying for something, we're praying for healing, we're praying for provision, we're praying for, and we're doing it in the name of Jesus, I'm praying for provision right now, I'm praying for my healing, Lord, and I thank you, I lift up my health right now, and I thank you for my healing, I lift up my, my finances, I thank you for financial breakthrough, we, we, we're lifting up the petitions, but what we're forgetting to do is once we've left up the petition, Satan, in the name of Jesus, I command you to take your hand off, take your hand off my finances, we got to use authority. We got to use the authority to speak against the thing that is blocking the blessings. We forget. We're praying for all this the correct way. We're doing everything right. We're connected. We're praying. We're connected. Blessings are being released. How come they're not getting to us? Because one thing is standing in the way. One thing is standing in the way. And we got to speak to that thing. Use the authority in the name of Jesus. Devil, take your hands off my health. Take your hands off my job. Take your hands off my family. Take your hands off my future. Take your hands off my life in the name of Jesus. Bam. Here comes the authority. Knocks him out the way. Here come your blessings. Raining down on you. Raining down. This, as soon, as soon as Pastor Hagen said that about though i'm going to post this picture i'm posting it on facebook and on our community page right after i get through this picture will be on facebook and the community page on youtube see we, the, see the, the the bible is telling us all the things we need to put our life together but the answers are in different parts of the bible mark 11 24 and then Luke 10, 19, they're not in the same place. But we have to put them together. We, we the, the Bible, because of all the different ways the Word is sharing with us, we, in our study of the Word, who is seeking to study the Word, the Holy Spirit will connect the dots. Just like when I, as soon as I heard Pastor Hagen say, you got to remember, you got to remember, the devil does not want you to get what you're praying for. So remember, he has no kind of hold on me. The devil can't, can't make you not get your blessing, but he can block your blessings unless you say, in the name of Jesus, devil, take your hand off my life. Take your hand off my health. Take your hand off my finances. Take your, in the name of Jesus. Now, you're using the authority I give you to trample over all the power of the enemy. That's where you use your authority. Your authority is to get him out the way to get the things you're praying for. Whatever you're praying for, make a part of your prayer. In the name of Jesus, devil, take your hand off my health. Take your hand off my finances. Take your hand off my family. Whatever you're praying for, you got to command in the name of Jesus, take your hand off whatever it is that he's blocking. You're doing everything right. You're praying right. You're lifting up right. You're shouting right. But you got to tell the devil, use your authority. That's why we're giving it. That's why Jesus gave us the authority. The authority to, to command the devil to get out of our way no matter what he's putting our way, we have the authority in the name of Jesus to command the devil to get out of my way and, and, and get take your hands off of my blessings. Whatever it is, if you don't know what the, if you don't know what the blessings are, Lord, I command the, in the name of Jesus, devil, take your hands off my life, take your hands off my household, my marriage, my relationship, whatever it is, command the devil to take his hands off anything that has to do with you. So those blessings, so those blessings can now move to you get him get thee behind me satan that's what it's called get thee behind me satan and in the name of jesus devil get out of my way that's what my that's what my song is get out of my way satan the jazz song get out of my way because as long as you're in my way you are blocking my blessings so get thee behind me satan which is what remember that's what jesus said jesus said in the temptation the devil's trying to talk in his ear first thing jesus said get thee behind me satan get out of my way 
God is a man. And then he starts speaking the word of God. Command the devil, speak the word of God. Command, speak the word of God. Command, speak the word of God. That, that's why Matthew 4, 4 is so important. Man shall not live by bread alone. With us, nothing can happen. But by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, that's when we use the authority. Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, we're activating our authority. And the authority moves the devil. He moves, he moves a problem. He moves whatever's in your way. And see, the reason the timing, the timing was so good. I I I start I started a new business of I told you guys about a month ago. Holy Spirit showed me an online business to do because I my life has changed because I can't do I can't do the physical things I used to do. So for a minute, panic tried to come in. Well, what you gonna do now? Devil. What you gonna do now? How you gonna make money now? Uh, yeah, you ain't no, you ain't making no money online. You ain't making no money here. You ain't making. Uh, the devil just whispering. He's just talking. He's just talking. So I start. So I start, I'm working on a new business, right? <laughs> so I'm starting a new business, and it's like getting no response. I'm going like, even even in a new business, there's some response, but I've been getting like no response whatsoever. And I'm going like, okay, now wait, wait a minute. I said something's going on. This is this is the timelessness of the message sent this past weekend. I'm asking Lord, okay, Lord, I, I followed your directions. I, I started I started a new business. I started this, Lord. You told me, stop worrying about what you can't do. Worry about what you can do. Your body's gonna get healed later. Right now, do what you can do. Stop worrying about what you can't do and focus on what you can do. So I start focusing on what I can do. And yet nothing's happening. So I said, what is going on? I said, Lord, what is going on? And then all of a sudden, a friend of mine sends me that sermon, and then the sermon gives me this diagram, and then this diagram suddenly says, wait a minute, we're doing everything right. We're praying right. The blessings have already been received. They've been already, it's done. It's already released. Everything we're praying for has already been done, finished. One thing we got to remember, one thing staying in the way, we got to command that thing to get out of the way. Whether it's the devil, demonic entity, whatever it is, command the devil in the area of the demonic spirit, name the unnamed, seen, unseen. Take your hands off my life in the name of Jesus. We are called it. Call it by name. If you don't know the name of it, I, I command the devil in the area of the spirit, name the unnamed, seen, unseen, to get out of my way. Take your hands off my life, off my finances. Whatever, whatever is being attacked in your life, command the devil to take his hands off. Whatever it is, whatever you, whatever it is you're struggling with right now, whatever your struggle is, you call it by name. Tell the devil directly in the name of Jesus, take your hands off my family, off my life, off my marriage, off my finances, off my health. Whatever it is, whatever is, whatever, this goes for whatever you're praying for. The devil is trying to keep you from your healing. He's trying to keep you from your finances. He's trying to keep you from your breakthrough. He's trying to keep you from where you're trying to go. He's trying to keep you from your goals. He, the devil is trying to keep you from your praise report that's what he's trying to because your praise report is going to be a blessing to others when you tell the goodness of god and you're going to start shouting he's trying to keep you from your testimony you, you we all got a test we all gonna have a testimony but we can't get a testimony until we get him out the way get thee behind me satan get D behind me, Satan, and every other hindering spirit trying to keep me from where i go take your hands off me in jesus name and we are saying boldly and we got to say it without doubt. Don't wonder if it works. No. The word says, I give you authority. Don't say, uh, I hope I got the authority. No, no excuse me. Hope. Hope. Hoping and praying don't work. We can't be hoping and praying. We got to be knowing. We got to be knowing and praying. Don't be hoping and praying. Hope means, I, I hope it works. No. You better get that hope. You better get hoping and praying. You better cast that phrase out of your mind. Hoping and praying. No. We going to be knowing. Knowing and praying. Hoping and praying don't get you there. Knowing and praying, knowing who you are in Christ, knowing you got the authority, that's going to be knocking. I rebuke it, bind it, cast it out, and on top of that, devil, get your hands off my life in Jesus' name. And God, thank you, Lord, for my provision. Thank you for my healing. And then you go to praise. You go into praise. Right after you tell the devil, get out the way, get, he gets out the way, now start praising. Because now you told him, get in Jesus' name, get your hands off this, and you use your authority, and the authority knocks him out the way start praising because now he's out the way here comes everything you've been praying for start praising everything you pray for you may be praying for years 
Everything you've been praying for is waiting to get to you, but it's being blocked. And if we don't speak, if we don't speak to the block, how can the blessings get to you if you don't speak to the block that's blocking it? That's why that's it it was almost it was almost like a light bulb. It, it, it literally it was a light bulb because the, the blocks, the attack on the car, the attack on the ministry, the attack on my business. I said, what is going on? I mean, we come to fellowship every day. We do an hour and a half of praise. We do stillness. I said, Lord, what is going on? What is going on? We're doing everything right. We're doing everything right. What is going on here? And then when he said that phrase, when he said that phrase, but you got to remember to speak to the one who is blocking your blessings. Your blessings have been released. That's why he gave us the authority. That's why he gave us the authority to get what is in our way out of the way in the spirit. But we don't see it. This is, not, this is not in the face. We don't see this. This is in the spiritual realm. The block is in the spiritual realm. And when we use our authority, we have stepped out of flesh into battle in the spirit. Because once you say in the name of Jesus, you're now stepping out of your flesh and now speaking to the spirit that is attacking you in the spiritual realm. And that's why we got to remember to use the word of God. Without God, we are nothing. If I don't say in the name of Jesus, devil, get out of my way. Devil will go. <laughs> devil, devil said, he said, get out your way. What you going what you gonna do, boy? Get out your way. I know you're not talking to me, this devil. The devil, get out of your way. What you mean get out your way? I ain't going nowhere. Devil be talking back to you until you say, in the name of Jesus, whoa! <laughs> devil, see, you can talk to the devil all you want. He ain't gonna move nothing. He ain't going nowhere until you say, in the name of Jesus. And once you say, in the name of Jesus, the devil gotta get gone. Excuse my French. He gotta get gone because he now knows that behind, in the name of Jesus, here comes the command. And whatever it is you're gonna say after, in the name of Jesus, it's going to happen, and the devil got to get gone. He got to get out of my way. Satan, get out of my way. And that's what we got to remember. I say it every day. We got to remember, as I close, we got to remember to use our authority. We got to remember to speak to those things that are, are trying to block. And sometimes we know that the spirit is in a person. It could be a coworker speaking venom. It could be like, like Anita. It could be a person in church trying to take away your faith by being so high and mighty. They try to make you feel like you're worthless because they so they so high and mighty. You get, get thee behind me, Satan. That's just, a, that's just a devil dressed up in church trying to steal your joy. When you got a person in the church trying to talk you down and doubt yourself in, in the house of God, guess what? Get thee behind me, Satan. Yeah, you look, you got your nice hat on. You get a nice pretty suit. Guess what? Get thee behind me, Satan. I recognize exactly who you are. You Satan dressed up in church. Because remember, the devil is not afraid of church. The devil could be sitting right next to you in church trying to steal your joy. And that's what happened with Anita. He, he's in church all dressed up looking like looking like like somebody else in church but he's there to take away your joy he's there to make you doubt yourself he is there trying to steal everything that is that you love about god because he used to be a praise angel he used to be a praise angel that's why he's not afraid of church he knows what church is all about that's why he doesn't have any hesitation to go in church and try to steal your joy in the house of god and we got to understand that and once you understand it's not like the movies. The devil doesn't stop at the door. Oh, this is a holy place. Like the, like the Dracula movies. Oh, this is a holy place. I can't come in. Excuse me. That's only only the movies. The devil knows exactly what the church is about. He is not afraid of the church, but he goes in with the same game. You in a, you in the house of God trying to praise and worship, and he'll try to say something in church, house of God, to steal your joy, to steal the sermon, to distract you, seduce you in church. See, that's what we got to understand, who we are, who we are in Christ. And there's nothing the devil can do unless we let him, in Jesus' name, amen. Now, the, uh, under the video, as we close, under the video, I'll be giving you other examples. Peter, Peter's singing, uh, remember, Peter's singing was doubt in the water. The, 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 the disciples panicked because there was a storm. Jesus was asleep. He said, peace be still, storm stop. How come we couldn't do it? Oh, man, a little faith. See, the Bible is full of examples of when the disciples doubted 
And Jesus kept saying, how long? How long, you old men of little faith? When you gonna get the clue to understand all you need is the faith of a grain of mustard seed. A mustard seed, mustard seed not even big, big. All you need is a the faith, the grain of a mustard seed, and you can say to whatever mountain, be gone, and it's gonna be moved. A grain, but not not a rock, not a baseball. A grain, a mustard seed, a mustard seed is about that big. A, a mustard seed is almost the size of a grain of sand. All you need is the faith of a mustard seed, and you can say to any mountain, move, and we moved, and we got made, and use the name of Jesus in Jesus' name. Whatever it is, get thee behind me, Satan, in Jesus' name. So commit, commit today, as we close, as we close, commit today. I, I'm talking, I'm talking to me too, because now, now I am understanding the attack on this ministry. I, I've been praying and praising like crazy, as you know, we praise every day like crazy, and I'm trying to figure out, Lord, show me what, what am I missing? What is this attack? And then that, that sermon, that sermon, the Holy Spirit gave this diagram, and then he connected dots. All you got to do, the only thing we're missing is when we're praying to, co to command whatever is blocking your prayers to get out of my way in Jesus' name. Take your hands off my life, off my health, off my provision, off my family, off my situation, off my job. Whatever it is you need to, to command, you command it right now in Jesus' name. And it's got to get gone. Resist the devil. And he will flee. Resist the devil. And he will flee. So don't let anybody ever, 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 don't let anyone ever steal your peace, your joy, or your faith. That's the trinity. Your peace, your joy, and your faith. That's the trinity we have. That's the trinity we have that keeps us whole in the spirit. That's what keeps us whole. Your peace. Your joy, your faith, you got to protect that like it's a gold mine. We got to protect our peace, our joy, and our faith. That's what the devil's after. If he can get any one of these three, if he can get any one of these three, your peace, your joy, or your faith, he's going to bring doubt into your life. And once doubt comes in, as we already saw, once doubt gets in, now he's going to start messing up your prayers and your life. So we say, get thee behind me, Satan, in the name of Jesus. Take your hand off right now. Take your hand off this fellowship right now in Jesus' name. Take your hand off every problem right now in Jesus' name. In the name of command, Lord, Father God, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Right now, we command right now in Jesus' name, Lord. We speak to the problem right now. Satan, get your hand off this fellowship right now in the name of Jesus. Take your hand off their finances. Take your hand off their health. Take your hand off whatever challenge any fellowship member is facing right now. In the name of Jesus, be gone in Jesus' name. And we say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings right now. Thank you for the provision and the breakthrough. Thank you, Lord, for moving mightily in every fellowship member's prayer request right now. In the name of Jesus, we say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. And that's what this is. Now, I'll be, I'll be putting this up. I'll be putting this up. about. A, I'll be putting it on the community page. The community page and Facebook, it'll be up about an hour after we finish i'll be putting it up so you can look at it and and copy it or download it to your phone but we just got to remember we got to remember we have to remember that whatever we're praying for the devil is working as hard as we're praying to keep us from having what we're praying for but he can't make us not have it because as soon as we say in the name of jesus take your hands off of it get deep behind me satan once you say in the name of Jesus, he's got to go. The block stops now. The block stops now. In Jesus' name, say it with me. The block stops now. Whatever's being blocked in my life, it stops today. In Jesus' name, claim it. Get out, get thee behind me, Satan, in Jesus' name. And after this is over, after this is over, speak it. Amen. Speak it as we close. Amen. You just, hey, hey, Lois, uh, quick. Uh, what, what's the question right quick? Hey, we get ready to close, Lois. Uh, what, what's the question? Praise God. Thank you, Lord. That's what we have to remember. That's what we have to remember. Now, we remember, we have no control over time. We have no control over when, but we do have control on that. Amen. Uh, Dan, this, 
this oh you know what because because of the urgency of this of this lesson and the way the holy spirit gave it to me the 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 mini nugget of this will be up about two hours from now so right after this goes archived i'll put the mini nugget of this up within the next couple of hours so you'll have the mini nugget of this lesson right as this goes archives the mini nugget behind it would be right behind it because he the, at the speed the way the holy spirit gave me the diagram he gave me the revelation all within listening to the sermon and see and 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 see that's how we do that uh amen amen praise god oh, lord you had a question i missed your question praise god. hey robbie amen praise god that's right the block stops now now that we know you speak to the block the devil and whatever whatever spirit david unnamed seen or unseen Take your hands off whatever you think you're being blocked. Whatever blessing you're praying for, that seems to be praying forever, you speak to that block. <coughs> and the devil's behind it. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Dory, welcome, Dory. Actually, Dory, I did a I did two lessons on that, Dory. Uh if you go through, if you put in, if you put in um a matter of fact, I'll look for that for you because I got I can't remember the lessons I have, I've done so many of them, but I I've done so. A matter of fact, you put uh, Holy Spirit and Fitz Houston in the, in YouTube Google, just put Holy Spirit and Fitz Houston, Golden Nuggets, uh, Holy Spirit, Fitz Houston, and all the different all the different lessons I've done on the Holy Spirit. I've done two of them on on Golden Nuggets, and I've done two on uh, on the uh, at home of the Word, Amen. So that can make sure you guys get to understand that. Um, I'm just to see some comments. Okay, oh yeah. Can a person have this? They, well, any spirit that, see, people, if a person, a person can have any kind of spirit in them if they're not prayed up. Um, uh, and I'll either, either go back into my notes and get more uh, details on that spirit. Matter of fact, I can actually speak on that tomorrow, uh, Lois, so I'll get more into that. Uh, because any any spirit that comes into a person, if they're not prayed up, see, the key is if a person is not prayed up as we are in seeking God every day, any kind of spirit can jump into them. Not just that one. Any spirit is available to jump into someone if they are not prayed up. And so we'll I'll go, matter of fact, since that's a good question, uh, I will I will add that to tomorrow's lesson because usually after I follow a lesson like this, I add a kingdom business. So I'll, I'll make tomorrow kingdom business so I can entertain Lois's question and anybody else who has. Uh, we talked about Anita and the person who tried to bring her down in church. That was that's the devil himself. So we'll talk about we'll talk about um, that tomorrow, Lois, if I have more time. Amen. So so that's what we'll. Uh, I make sure I got anybody else any other questions, uh, but. We'll, Uh, Melody, you wear you wear a necklace in your mom. Oh, great! You got uh, your mom. Oh, you know what, Melody? I'm glad you said that. I forgot years ago. Matter of fact, now that you said that, I think my mother did the same thing. She actually had a ministry. That's why I know how big a mustard seed is. This church passed out a mustard seed in a little plastic, a little plastic container, which let me see how small a mustard seed is. So when the Bible says. All you need is a faith of mustard seed. You know, amen. Praise God. Amen. All right. So, Father God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this great lesson today, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the revelation that you gave me from the message I heard yesterday, Lord, to be able to share with the fellowship, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for right now, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for right now for being able to share this message with the fellowship that will affect and strengthen our prayer life, Lord, to not, know, to not only pray for what we're praying for, Lord, but to, Lord, to remove anything that's trying to block our blessings. Amen. Praise God. So we just make sure we just, we just pray for that right now. We just pray for that right now. Pray for that right now. And we'll look into that. And we'll, go, we'll, get, into the, we'll get into that spirit tomorrow, uh, Lois, and all the others right now. And we seek that right now. And Lord, any, if I, see, I see several of you have questions. Remember, tomorrow will be kingdom business. So any other questions you have, we will address tomorrow. Amen. And that's what Kingdom Business is all about. Talking about what we've talked about today and any other questions you can come up. 
we will follow that tomorrow with kingdom business amen fellowship praise god praise god and right now we're going to fellowship the a, a prayer of salvation lord right now someone's been watching the past two hours lord someone's been watching this entire time not understanding our love for the lord our fellowship our praise our worship someone's been watching totally confused because all you've been doing is crying. You feel like the world is caving in on you. You feel like giving up on life itself. And somehow, <laughs> somehow you find yourself on this channel, have no idea how you got here. And that's because God brought you here. Because God sees the emotional pain you're going through right now. He sees what you're going through right now. And we say, Lord, touch this person right now who's listening right now. Touch this person right now, Lord who needs you. God brought you to this channel. You're not here by accident. You are not here by accident. You may be here walking as a backslider. You're walking as a backslider in guilt. You suddenly realize the mistake you've made. For whatever reason, you chose to leave the Lord and go back into the world as a backslider. And now the devil's knocking you every which way but loose because you know he's telling you you can't go back to God. You can't go back because you failed God. And that is a lie from the pit of hell. God knows your heart. The devil cannot make you not go back to the Lord because he can't control you. As soon as you look up to the Lord, in Jesus' name, I need you. I want you, Lord. You just say the prayer of salvation over again, and the Lord welcomes you back with open arms. None of us are perfect. Every day, all of us have fallen short, and we're seeking the best we can to walk in his will. So whether you've been walking as a backslider in guilt, or you just walking in depression right now. You feel like giving up on life. Both of you repeat after me. Father God, come into my life. Forgive me for the wrong I've done. And the wrong I've been. I believe that Jesus died on the cross. For me and my sins. And was raised from the dead. I believe Jesus is the son of God. And I commit right now. I will not do a single thing in life or make a single decision in life without living it up to you first. Create in me, O oh Lord, a clean heart and remove from me anything and everything that is not like you. In Jesus' name I pray. And if you say that prayer sincerely, your spirit is now right to receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a part of God that lives inside of us to teach us, to guide us, to show us the people, activities, and things you're doing right now, which is why you're going through the depression. Holy Spirit will show you how to find new friends who love the Lord and can show you how to live in this world loving the Lord and not loving the world. The world is what brings in the heaviness. Holy Spirit will give you a thirst to pray more, talk to God more, read the Bible more, do this every day, feed your spirit, starve your flesh, feed your faith, starve your doubt. And before you know it, you'll feel the peace of God coming to your life to let you know it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus, we as a fellowship rebuke and bind the spirits of retribution, revenge, retaliation, and backlash, and every other demonic spirit, named unnamed, seen unseen, who may attack anyone in this fellowship because of their participation in this fellowship. And we cast all you demonic spirits out of our mind, out of our home, out of our families, out of our spirit, back to the pit of hell from which you came, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, loose, Lord, loose the fellowship, Lord, loose unspeakable joy, loose peace beyond understanding, loose restoration, Lord, restore, restore, restore every area of our life, Lord, loose reconciliation, heal marriages and families, Lord, falling apart because of the devil's attack, Lord. And Lord, keep a hedge of protection over all the marriages and families who are not falling apart, but who the devil still attacks every day, Lord. Loose supernatural healing, emotional healing, physical healing. By your stripes, we are healed, and we speak it every day. We breathe it every day. We live it every day. By your stripes, we are healed. I believe I've received my healing. I believe I've received my healing in Jesus' name. We say it every day. Confess it every day. Live it every day. Loose supernatural overflow financial breakthrough supernatural debt cancellation lord let your blessings rain down of abundance rain down on the fellowship you shall supply all our need according to your riches 
in glory by Christ Jesus. Not our riches, your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. For we're the head and the tail. We have blessings flowing in, blessings flowing out. We're above and not beneath. We're the lender and not the borrower. We are blessed that we may be a blessing to others. We are out of debt. All of our needs are met. Plenty more to put in store. We are children of God. And nothing shall by any means hurt us or block our blessings in any way, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you right now, Lord, for our miracle, Lord. We now understand how to claim that victory and remove any block of our miracle. So we take time every day. We see it every day. See our miracle every day. See it. Believe it. Receive it to your heart. And once we receive it to our heart, we start expecting it right now. Start expecting your miracle right now. We don't know the when. And because we don't know when, thank you, Jesus. That means any day could be the day of the manifestation of the miracle we've been praying for for so long. So we say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And now we know to command the devil in the name of Jesus to take his hands off of our miracle, off of our prayers, off of every part of our life. All these things we ask in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let the fellowship say amen, amen, amen.